Isn't it true? It's it just is. it's just never ending. No. Listen. I of course scrolled down one of the pages where I found this one book and I read the title of another book here called Sermons by the Devil. Oh, yeah. That sounds interesting, huh? Mm hmm The author is Reverend W. S. Harris, author of Mr. World and Miss Church Member, Life in a Thousand Worlds, Modern Fables and Parables, etc., etc., etc. The book is from 1865. Mm. Yeah, I couldn't help it, so I clicked on it. <laughs> so it starts, To my many friends who by their kindly criticism, pro and con, have made it easier for me to write and who have urged me to, completion of this, uh, to the completion of this volume, this book is sincerely dedicated. Preface The part that Satan plays in the drama of a human life is often larger than a person will admit. Each one of us is not only acting, but we are constantly acted upon by one or the other of two great influences. The good spirit endeavors, us, uh, endeavors to lead us to the skies, and its angels are ever willing to minister to our real needs. The evil spirit, either openly or undercover, seeks to destroy our mind with the untruth by preaching to us his black sermons of death. Some of these sermons are short, others are longer, and at uh, and at times they are delivered to us in the language of an angel with all the dignity that good scholarship might command. This volume was commenced with the purpose of tearing off his satanic mask so that people might see more clear to uh, the real source of these dark sermons. There are many people who, after yielding to temptation, will declare that they have acted independent of any evil influence. Satan is pleased to see a person rest in the shadow of such a delusion, but it is better for each one of us to know that either the good or evil spirit is seeking to be guest of our thoughts, and it depends upon our attitude who will be entertained. The most deceived man of all is he whose mind is influenced by the evil spirit and yet he believes that he is besought by the good spirit. We hope to reach some of such persons whose eyes are color blind and whose ears are so impaired that they alone cannot distinguish between the voices that are calling them downward and those that are calling them upward. We aim to keep the book clean throughout even though we try to bring out a real character of, un of the unclean spirit. We have advanced only such arguments of Satan as he uses continually in his practical dealings with people. We are particular that, one, uh, that none of the chapters should be a source of temptation, uh, 
but that they might give Satan his proper setting more clearly in the minds of the reader and thereby destroy the edge of his sword as much as possible. To the artwork of this book the most careful attention has been given, both by the author and the famous artist Paul Kraft of New York. Neither work nor money was spared to produce the most accurate drawings as to assist the mind in grasping the truths of this book. And now that volume is completed, it is the fond hope of the writer that it may not fall short of its purpose. The author sought the set <coughs> the author sought the aid, the aid of divine wisdom in producing this book and now depends upon the same power to carry it into the channels of his own choosing. Signed by the author, May 12th, 1904. Hmm. I haven't read that before. It's just, uh, I just wanted to read that to you and, and to myself. Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. I understand. <laughs> It takes uh, quite a bit of skill to be able to read something and comprehend it while trying to keep your speech right, <laughs> pronunciation and everything. So yes. yeah, that's that's I a am, real skill. I'm gifted with I'm gifted by the Holy Spirit that's with right. that. I can tell that's you. That's right. Oh wow! And I was just reading a bit of the. Uh, uh, Papacy and the Civil Power this morning. Mm -hmm. Good book there. Ah, uh, man, this is really something, though, this uh, Devil in Robes book, too. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, interesting. Um, I've never heard of these before. Neither that one you, uh, Romanism and the Republic. I'm not familiar with this book. Was this Tom one Tom read? What? Yeah, Tom just started reading that on uh, the 11th of September 2009. Wow. And uh, then wow. continued on the 14th, on the Monday, because that uh, September 11th was that Friday. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, this looks good, too. Yeah, I think so, too. Yeah. Heavy duty. Problem is, all these books look good, but where to take the time from Ooh, to read them all? Yeah, good question. This is, you know, I, I, I was, I was just sitting here on my computer and I wanted to read on the secret history of the Jesuits in German, and just reading in preparation and looking for some pictures that I can put in there so that when I record the reading with my desktop camera, I will have on the one part the PDF. And on the other part, I will have uh, the pictures. Right. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, but I wanted to look that book up because these twelve points, or how many there were, from the can uh, canon law. Those are good ones. Oh uh, yeah. They were they they were really marked into my mind when uh, Tom read that book, and I said I have to look that book up. So I. Uh, I started the audio here mm. to get the title of the book. Then I I uh, looked for the uh, for the book, and yeah, that's how it all started. And that brought me to the last one here, Satan. Uh, uh, what's the book? Sermons by the Devil. Yeah, uh, yeah, man. Sermons <laughs> by the Devil. Ush. Uh, it starts here like on on. Uh, on this page, uh, when you got the introduction done, then it says here, Satan's Sermon on Suicide. Satan was making earnest efforts to persuade a certain man to commit suicide. He tempted him at midnight as far as the center of the bridge, and as the man hesitated to spring into the water, Satan continued speaking, quote, I congratulate you as you stand here on the very edge of genuine happiness. If you have sufficient courage, you will soon enter into perfect peace. Look down upon the sweet waters and see how they invite you to the most peaceful kind of a death. They promise to cover all your cares and troubles and put you to sleep on the bosom of the deep. A good angel interrupted these temptations of Satan. Spring not from this bridge, for such an act will bring no relief to your poor soul. 
It would be the opening of the door through which you would enter to experience deeper sorrows and grief more terrible. Listen no longer to that voice that points you toward the pangs of death. The words of the angel touched the heart of the man, and they seemed to draw him away. But Satan again quickly spoke, Don't be a coward! Have you not found that the best joys of this life and are worthless, and your troubles are so great that you can no longer bear them? Why be so foolish as to continue under this load to live on in misery and wretchedness? You have gone thus far towards peace, and now one plunge from the bridge will end all your woes. Again the angel insisted, Nay, nay, be not so foolhardly. Before you, before you lies not only the dark waters, but the judgment bar of God. If you listen and heed the voice of Satan, you are responsible for the result of listening. You cannot plead any excuse for self-murder inasmuch as God has sent me as one of his angels to warn you while, the, while he, the warmth of life is yet yours. Return to your tasks, face your situation, forsake sin and take God into your life. Then your troubles will no longer see unsurmountable. By God's help you will be given the best solution of the problem that vexes you and your life will will yet be crowned with honor and glory. Let God drop life's curtain, but do not draw it yourself. These kindly words had a great influence on the heart of this man. Once more he was about to turn and walk toward the city, but the enemy with bold audacity again continued his sermon. What can you see ahead of you as you lift your eyes? Have you not tried the theater? And what joy can that give? Have you not tried the ways of prostitution, and what lasting comfort have you found? Have you not tasted of the wine glass, and found no satisfying portion? In brief, is it not true that everything has failed to give you the peace for which you have been vainly sighing? You must not be deceived by false voices that call you to imaginary peace. Religion is a failure, and you need not think of depending upon the church or Sunday school for any real comfort. The world would be far better off if there were no churches. The only work they do is to annoy the consciences of people while they live, and in many instances cast a heavy gloom over them in death. The devil paused just a moment, and then, in a softer voice, continued, Since all of your prospects are like bubbles, why not leap instantly into the waters whose velvety touches shall smooth down all your cares and bury you in peace forever? There is no grave like that of the water. Look now upon its smiling face and remember that all those silent moonlight reckonings are inviting you to deepest and most sublime comfort. Hesitate no more. Why not carry your whole purpose to a finish? There could be nothing sweeter than to fall from this bridge. The rest will all, allow, all follow like the evening follows noon, or like the bright stars follow the heat of a closing day. At this the man actually learned, leaned over, and was looking thoughtfully into the waters below him. Then the good angel lovingly entreated him once more. Think of your mother. Think of your friends. Look at the disgrace you will leave behind you. Remember God who made the waters, made them not to comfort a dying man. There is no peace to be found in such a manner of ending life. Empty your mind of these vain delusions which I assure you are but temptations from the devil. If you heed his voice, you will find, when it is too late, that you will be in the power of the very wretch who now seeks your ruin. Then did the devil whisper a few long sentences, so low that no one could hear but the listener. It was a terrible temptation playing upon the man in his weakness. It was his purpose to heed the voice of the good angel, but he somehow felt that he was being drawn away from the light that was trying to enter his soul. And so, 
and the desperation that was born out of this thought, he seized his enemy as if in boldly conf bodily conflict, and taking advantage of the advice previously given to him by the angel, he called upon God for help. After a sharp, decisive struggle, Satan was pushed off of the bridge. But it seemed as if he did not fall into the water. The man quickly turned, for he felt a saving hand upon him, and to his happiness he found that the angel had not let him off during all the conflict. Never did any creature seem so beautiful as the angel appeared to him at that moment. He had conquered in the conflict, and, the ne and next he breathed out his petition on the midnight air that God might help him through the troubles that had almost overwhelmed him. His prayer was answered, and over the weeks of a wasted life, he reared a building of character and wealth that the humbly dedicated to the unseen God. It is sad to relate that not all of the sons and daughters of the human race conquer Satan when they are subjected to the terrible temptations of self-destruction. Wow, yeah, that's heavy duty. It's a good ending in that story. Yeah, and when you turn the page, it uh, it reads on every inward voice or suggestion that urges a man to self-destruction is born of Satan. Look at the picture and see how the black demon points downward. He is urging the man to find comfort in suicide. That is the best recipe that Satan and infidelity can offer to a person who is overwhelmed with trouble. Let such a one turn a deaf ear to Satan's temptation and listen to the angel of light who will point him to the sun of righteousness by day and the star of hope by night. And then you can see on page 23 a drawing on the bridge where that man is standing, uh, uh, leaning over the bridge and from the one hand Satan is trying to drag him into the water and from the other hand the angel behind him is trying to prevent that he jumps into the water. Mm -hmm. It's a nice drawing that we have in that picture and uh, in that book here. Mm -hmm. And then it continues and then it continues with the uh, sermons on the river of life. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. For to do them that ye may live, and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. Ye shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall ye diminish aught from it, that ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. Your eyes have seen what the Lord did because of Baal Peor. For all the men that followed Baal Peor, the Lord thy God hath destroyed them from among you. But ye that did cleave unto the Lord your God are alive, every one of you, this day. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as the Lord my God commanded me, that ye should do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all these statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. For what nation is there so great, who hath God so nigh unto them, as the Lord your God is in all things that we call upon him for? And what nation is there so great, that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this law, which I set before you this day? Only take heed to thyself, and keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart and all the days of thy life, but teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. Especially the day that thou stoodest before the Lord thy God in Horeb, when the Lord said unto me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, 
and that they may teach their children. And he came near and stood under the mountain, and the mountain burned with fire unto the midst of heaven with darkness, clouds, and thick darkness. And the Lord spake unto you out of the midst of the fire. He heard the voice of the words, but saw no similitude, only he heard a voice. And he declared unto you his covenant, which he commanded you to perform, even ten commandments, and he wrote them upon two tables of stone. The Lord commanded me at that time to teach you statutes and judgment that ye might do them in the land whither ye go over to possess it. Take ye therefore good heed unto yourselves. For ye saw no manner of similitude on that day that the Lord spake unto you in Horeb out of the midst of the fire. Lest ye corrupt yourselves and make you a graven image the similitude of any figure, the likeness of male or female, the likeness of any beast that is on earth, the likeness of any wicked fowl that flieth in the air, the likeness of anything that creepeth on the ground, the likeness of any fish that is in the waters beneath the earth. And lest thou lift up thine eyes unto heaven, when thou seest the sun and the moon and the stars, even all the host of heaven, shouldst be driven to worship them and serve them, which the Lord thy God hath divided unto all nations under the whole heaven. But the Lord hath taken you and brought you forth from the iron furnace, even out of Egypt, to be unto him a people of inheritance, as ye are this day. Furthermore, the Lord was angry with me for your sakes, and swear that I should not go over Jordan, and that I should not go into that good land which the Lord thy God giveth thee for an inheritance. But I must die in this land, I must not go over Jordan, but ye shall go over and possess that good land. Take heed unto yourselves, lest ye forget the covenant of the Lord your God which he made with you, and make you a graven image or the likeness of anything which the Lord thy God hath forbidden thee. For the Lord thy God is a consuming fire, even a jealous God. When thou shalt beget children, and children's children, and ye shall remain <clears throat> and ye shall have remained long in the land, and shall corrupt yourselves, and make a graven image, or the likeness, or anything, and shall do evil in the sight of the Lord thy God, to provoke him to anger. I call heaven and earth to witness against you this day, that ye shall soon utterly perish from off the land whereunto you go over Jordan to possess it. Ye shall not prolong your days upon it, but shall utterly be destroyed. Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number among the heathen, whither the Lord shall lead you. And there shall ye serve gods, the work of men's hands, wood and stone, which neither see nor hear nor eat nor smell. But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him, if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, and shalt be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God, he will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers which he swore unto them. For ask now of the days that are past which were before thee since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from the one side of heaven unto the other whether there hath been any such thing as this great thing is, or hath been heard like it? Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of the fire as thou hast heard and live? Or hath God essayed to, to go and take him a nation from the midst of another nation by temptations? by signs and by wonders and by war and by a mighty hand, by stretched out arm and by great terrors, according to all that the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your eyes? Unto thee it was showed that thou mightest know that the Lord, he is God. There is none else beside him. Out of heaven he made thee to hear his voice, that he might instruct thee upon earth he showed thee his great fire, and thou heardst his word out of the midst of the fire. And because
because he loved thy fathers. Therefore he chose their seed after them, and brought thee out in his sight with his mighty power out of Egypt. To drive out nations from before thee greater and mightier than thou art, to bring thee in, to give thee their land for an inheritance, as it is this day. Know therefore this day, and consider it in thy heart, that the Lord, he is God in heaven above and upon the earth beneath. There is none else. Thou shalt keep therefore his statutes and his commandments, which I command thee this day, that I may go well with thee and with thy children after thee, and that thou mayest prolong thy days upon the earth, which the Lord thy God giveth thee forever. Then Moses severed three cities on this side Jordan toward the sun rising, that the slayer might flee thither, which should kill his neighbor unawares, and hated him not in times past, and that fleeing unto one of these cities he might live, namely Bezer, in the wilderness in the plain country of the Reubenites, and Ramoth in Gilead of the Gedites, and Golan in Bashan of the Manassites. This is the law which Moses set before the children of Israel. These are the testimonies and the statutes and the judgments which Moses spake unto the children of Israel after they came forth out of Egypt. On this side Jordan, in the valley over against Beth Peor, in the land of Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Heshbon, whom Moses and the children of Israel smote after they were come forth out of Egypt. And they possessed his land and the land of Og, king of Bashan, two kings of the Amorites, which were on this side Jordan toward the sun rising. From Aroa, which is by the bank of the river Arnon, even unto Mount Sion, which is Hermon. And all the plain on this side Jordan eastward, even unto the sea of the plain, under the springs of Pisgah.